Billy. Rotten evening. Rotten. Why did you bring me here? Ordered to. General Warwick again, eh? No, it wasn't General Warwick at all. It was a girl. Goodbye. Now, Larry, wait a minute. Whiskey and soda. Make mine a large one. Then I'd rather not. I'll have the bottle. Uh, who was it? Who? who? The girl. What girl? The girl who orders you to bring me here. Oh, uh, Diana Duncan. Diana Duncan. Cheers. She saw you playing polo last week. <laughs> no, the day you fell off your horse. Well, it's all off. I won't meet her. Well, you can't meet her. She's not here. Fine. We'll have another drink and go home. Ooh, ooh. What's the matter with her? She's here. Sorry, not even an extra one left either. You know I would, don't you? Hello, Diana. Here he is. Who? Larry de Steen. Larry de Steen, Diana Duncan. Oh, how do you do, Captain de Steen? How do you do, Miss Duncan? You know, it's lucky you were right when you did. He's been trying to run away. Oh, someone's kicked my foot. Hard, I hope. Well, I was only doing what you asked me oh, to do. Oh, Peter, be a darling, will you? And run along to my car and put that inside. Huh? <laughs> yes, of course, yes, sir. I've forgotten. Has he been saying wicked things about Miss Captain de Steen? No, he's made me very anxious to meet you. Well, that's mutual. You know, you cut a very dashing figure on the polo field. You mean the easy way I fall off horses. Oh, I gather you take many things in your stride. Is one of them? I wish I could let you judge for yourself. Can't you? I heard you say all your dances were promised. Not this one. May I claim it? Oh, Captain de Steen, how you sweep a girl off her feet. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you won't find it too dull, Your Highness. It's not exactly a state affair. Oh, I'm sure I shall find it amusing. <laughs> I see your daughter is already dancing. Yes, Your Highness. Possessive, aren't you? About some things. What things? Tell me. That'll take more than one dance, too. Excuse me, Miss Patekello. Your Highness. May I? Oh, but Your Highness, I've all my I dance... came especially to dance with you. I'm Mr. afraid, General. sir, that this dance has already been promised. Your Highness, home. may I present Captain Destiny? Well, how do you do? Come, Miss Duncan. I can't say now the manners of your Turkish prince, General Warren. What could I do? He invited himself. Pity we have to be polite to the fellow. Must have been drinking. Hello, Destiny. Enjoying yourself? No, sir. And they tell me you're a wizard at speaking Turkish. Did you try any on His Highness? No, but I was very much tempted to. What's he doing here, sir? Uh, keeping close to Diana Duncan, I should say. Uh, he met her at dinner tonight. Talked about business conditions in Turkey with Sir George, but kept his eye on the daughter all the time. Well, I hope you enjoy yourself. <coughs> Jolly good, isn't it? Whiskey and soda. Right. Aren't you tight yet? Now, I shall be in a minute. Do you know, they tell me it takes 40 years to drink yourself to death, and I'm two days behind schedule. Well, then, sir, what will you do now, Any easy. What's all that about? I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, but, Larry, listen, look at this. He's got shelling. I never knew that English knights could be as beautiful as this. Or English girls as beautiful as you. I think we'd better go back to the ballroom. No, not yet. It's so lovely out here. Don't be a fool, Your Highness. Let me go. Let me go. Hi, Larry. Where are you going? Come on, the four of you. I've just been struck by one of your officers. Your Highness, I must investigate this immediately. Captain Destine, you'll report to me at once in the members' room. I shall not forget this. Your Highness, a well-taught lesson should never be forgotten. You're sure I shall remember, Captain Bistie.
Valley, how many S's in resignation? Now I understand why you never wear your old school tie. Oh, yeah. I say, Larry, what did those staff chaps mean by saying that our resignations would be accepted to avoid a diplomatic incident? That's just to prove that my punching his serene highness on the nose wasn't an official act of the British government. Look here, Larry, you can't stop mucking the place about like that. Why not? Well, we're expecting someone to tea. Oh, we are, are we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sir George Duncan is dropping in. Why? Well, he's got to bring Diana. Another of that young lady's orders? Well, after he refused her invitation to go there for tea. She's coming here instead. Well, I'm going out. You can't, oh, man. She made me promise not to tell you. She'd skim me alive if she thought. It's about time somebody did. Well, I don't understand why you don't want to see her. She's a very nice girl. I didn't punch Prince Ali on the nose because she was a nice girl. I just did what anyone would do under the circumstances. And now all this fuss about it. All right, all right. Every time I try and help a girl, I land myself up to the ears in trouble. Well, I've been gallant for the last time. If ever I meet a girl in distress again, I shall cover my eyes and count 20. Goodbye. Come in. Hello, Larry. Hello, Justine. Glad to see you. How do you do, Sir George? Won't you go through? Oh, thank you. Uh, we just dropped in to see if Peter... Oh, uh, Peter's in there. I was just going out. Oh, Larry. Yes? Why were you running away from me? I wasn't. Then why do you snub me? I'm not trying to snub you. Are you a woman hater? You weren't the other night. I am now. Because of me? No. Then why are you making me so unhappy? But I'm not, am I? Oh, you're making me feel it's all my fault. Oh, Larry, I couldn't help what happened the other night any more than you could. If I'd known you were going to lose your commission for me, I wouldn't have tried to stop Prince Ali kissing you. You're not to say that. What have I done to offend you? But you haven't. I, I can't explain. Diana. Well, Justine. What do you think of the whole proposition? It's very good of you, Sir George, but I really can't accept it. Larry, why ever not? All right. One thing I thought I might go for a holiday. Perhaps I'll do a bit of hunting in Africa. Captain Destine, I must talk to you very frankly. I happen to know that your army pay was more or less the whole of your income. I think I'll go and see if there are any more biscuits. There aren't any more biscuits. Quiet. I was afraid there weren't. Well, now, admitting the financial circumstances... They do not alter the case. I can't accept your offer, Sir George. Because you think Father's trying to reward you for what you did to Prince Ali. Exactly. Hmm. You see, Daddy, Captain Destine thinks that you're a nice, charitable old gentleman. Damn it, sir, I'm a businessman, not a welfare worker. I want a manager for my Turkish tobacco depot. Now, you speak Turkish, and you seem to be a man capable of making quick uh, decisions. Well, I'm not a business. Oh, businessman be drowned. Oh, Larry, don't be so obstinate. I'm sorry. What about me if I started to learn Turkish in a hurry? Any good? Okay, this team. I have a lot of money invested in Turkey. I know that money is quite safe as long as the present government's in power. But I've heard that several very peculiar things have happened lately which alarm me. So I can't help feeling that there's some sinister influence at work. I don't know what, but, uh, well, I think it's vital that I send my old man down there to investigate and report to me. You mean a sort of secret agent? Oh, there's nothing so romantic as that. This is a very serious proposition. I need a man who will take his life in his hands. You're not taking a reward for what you did for my daughter, but you will be helping me in a very grave situation. Now, how do you feel about it? I accept. I'm very glad, my boy. Very glad. Oh, Larry, I knew you'd do it for me. Larry, that's grand, old oh boy.
Superintendent Gregor Molto. Who? Molto. I am Molto. What do you want? Oh, I've just arrived from England. My name's Destine. Oh, Monsieur Destine. Oh, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Sir George Duncan writes to me that you come, but I did not expect you so soon. I think it. <laughs> you do not speak Turkish. I'm afraid not. Oh, it does not matter. Uh, I speak English. You wish something? <laughs> you come to me. <laughs> Now that I have shown you all the books, Monsieur Destine, everything is all right. No, just as I told you. Yes, everything seems to be in order. But what I can't understand is... I think it was done. Who is that? Tapi Raouf, my clerk. Bring him in. Who? Bring him in. Raouf, your bourrier. This is Monsieur Destine, the new manager. How do you do, Mr. Destine? I'm glad you speak English. Have you ever been to England? No, sir. I studied here at Robert College. Hmm. Well, the books are all right. But what I'd like to have explained is why you keep changing your tobacco birds. Well, you see, sometimes they have a bad crop. Then we do not buy. Next year, perhaps they have a good crop. Then we buy. We cannot use bad tobacco. I see, of course. You want to say something? Yes, I don't think it's a joke, Oh, what is it? Excuse me, but I must disagree. Perhaps there may be one bad year in five. It's just then that they need our help to carry on over. But he does not know anything about this. He's a student, not practical. Always he thinks he knows better. You like to see the depot, yes? Yes. Wait, I get the keys. Oh. Now, Ralph, what did you want to say? Well, there's very much I want to say. Not here. Why not? This is my office, isn't it? Yes. This is not the right place. Very well. Call for me at my hotel tomorrow. We can talk undisturbed. You want to see the depot now? All right. that English one was so chivalrous and helped the girl in distress. Did you also hear the expression once bitten, twice shy? Did something bite you? No, not this time. I was clever enough not to get mixed no, up I in... I could have killed you. Why me? Well, both of you. That's very ferocious for an English girl. I'm Russian. Ah, that accounts for it. I thought you said you were trying to avoid trouble. Yes. It seems to me you're heading for... Yes, I thought I'd discovered a marvelous out of trouble. It seems to have broken down. I was so proud when I'd avoided it down at the quay, and now oh, here I am. Am I such a trouble? Oh, no, no. No, on the contrary. No, I really, I... You... What am I? <laughs> well, you're... You're much nicer now. I'm very so fierce. Don't 
that's because I'm hungry. Right, sir. What do you want is a good dinner. Thank you. So nice of you to ask me. And next, madame? Some more caviar. Another portion of caviar. And after your chicken, monsieur? I'll just have some fruit salad. May I now suggest some champagne, monsieur? Cordon Rouge. Bottle or magnum, madame? Have your pencil, please. No, I won't need a magnum, a bottle will do. What's your system? What do you mean? I mean, what makes you decide when to stop? Well, it's quite simple. I've reached the price. The price of what? A new hat. Oh! <laughs> I suggested the Cathy Grumps hat, because I thought I could arrange to get a commission here. And did you? Yes. Well, don't make a face. As soon as it reached the price, I stopped. And that makes us quit. No, not yet. No, thank you. I don't really like champagne. That's just part of my business transaction. And now that it's over, can I cost you a cup of coffee, please? Two cups. You know, I really ought to buy something for that Keyside admirer of yours. Why? Well, because I have to thank you for this dinner. And I'm enjoying it so much. Then you have forgiven this my little trick. It wasn't very nice of me. I'm off this house. You know what we'll do? What? We'll go down to the quay tomorrow, we'll slap another in the face, and then we can have dinner together again. <laughs> Couldn't we skip that part of it? But I would like to see you again. Tomorrow? And perhaps the next day. Let's make it every day. Monsieur Destine? Yes? Is that your name? Yes, Larry Destine. What's yours? Tanya Veronov. Veronov. I seem to remember something. <coughs> A telephone call for you, sir. For me? Who is it? A Monsieur Moldov. He said very urgent. Will you excuse me? Of course. I'll be back. I can't come just now. It's Gaston's order. Come a little nearer. You are dining with an Englishman, Captain Destine. You mean Mr. Destine? Captain Destine. He is supposed to be the new manager for Duncannon Tobacco Depot. It is for you to find out what is his real purpose in being here. But I won't do it. I've told you before, I'm finished with this sort of thing. Surely you haven't forgotten what happened to your father after we returned him to Russia? I could always send you back, you and the Baroness, your mother. But how can I do it? I hardly know him. You will get to know him. You are a woman of quality. You have breeding. Englishmen have a weakness for exiled nobility. Make use of it. Full use of it. Understood? Yes. Then do not let me detain you any longer. Come on. Come on. Don't let me detain you any longer. We can go into the papers in the morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good night, sir. <laughs> Sorry it took so long. Oh, I remember now. Veronov. Baron Veronov. General in command of the second Crimea. Are you his daughter? A baron's daughter? <laughs> I ask you, do I look like a baron's daughter? Well, 
Where do we go now? What do you mean? Well, I surely don't think this is all the money you're going to spend on me this evening. I thought you said you'd finish your business transaction. Didn't you say you had enough here, huh? If you take me seriously, <laughs> you must be very inexperienced. This is the first time you've taken out a girl like me. Oh, I see. Well, shall we go? I'm afraid not to give it. Well, what about the bill and my money? Surely you don't think I've wasted my time on you for nothing? I'm sorry for the wasted evening. You may be right, myself. I'm not an expert in the tobacco business. And yet even I've noticed that the weight of the incoming shipments is increasing while the quantity delivered is decreasing. It calls for an explanation. But, but I have already explained that the tobacco ah. you cannot do it. Papa says it, Papa says it. My, they did. Excuse me, there is something wrong in the grading room. I will be back immediately. How many people have keys to the depot? Well, sir, and the foreman, sir. Have been here at night? No, sir. I'll be back in a minute. Se kufos, men sa se kuf pi hinnes kores da mi teres ti varka tsu edo. Ah, ke opri a kozine paru isti grafio tu. that shipment going to? Oh, just a little mistake. Uh, the shipment was made for another depot down there. I hope it gets there safely. Walter? Yes, sir. Uh, haven't found the key to this door yet? The key? Not yet. But I have told you there is nothing of importance in there. Some boxes and some old machinery. Nobody has been in there maybe for six months. Doesn't matter. Yes, you had here. See you tomorrow. Hello? Oh, no, Marta! Has in bed? The steam is empty, yes, you know, so I seem to pull down. Captain, the steam. Come on. And that is it, Captain, the steam. Yes, you know, so I seem to pull down.
in a row. Done. I asked you to come here today because I'm determined to find out about this mysterious motor cake. What do you know about it? Nothing. What did Mortov mean by saying the last three shipments should be unloaded at night? I really don't know. I understand, Turkish. I don't mind about that now. What goes on at the depot at night? I have never been there at night. Do you ever see this sign? Double Crescent. What do you know about it? It's a sign of our organization. What organization? Does Molotov belong to it? No. No? Now, Ralph, you've always been honest and frank with me. I really don't know. You see, our organization is built up out of cells of five members each. Nobody knows more than four other members of his own cell. Why is that? Well, for the protection of our organization, if the cell is discovered, or there is a traitor, danger is limited only to five members and not to the whole movement. What's the object of the movement? Could you come to a Turkish coffee house tonight with me? To the Yes. Why? You'll meet a few of my friends, who, like me, are prepared to fight for the same idea. The old Turk. But, Ralph, what is it you're planning? Revolution? What for? For the ideals which made Turkey great so many centuries, and which are ridiculed and abolished today. Our ancient customs are prosecuted. The fairs and the veil are forbidden forever. But modern Turkey has accepted these changes. You can't go back to the old ways. It's impossible. All things are possible to those who have the will and the courage. An admirable text. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, forgive me, but I could not help overhearing your last remark. Excuse me, gentlemen. I was just strolling around, admiring one of the most fascinating relics of our glorious past, the marble tower. And as I see you are interested in these ruins yourself, perhaps you will allow me to take you inside and show you what gives the tower its sinister reputation. Place. No, it is not very cheerful, but let me show you what for me is the secret of its charm. Listen. In a few moments it will be washed out to sea through the tunnel. Very neat, very clean. An execution chamber. And a very useful one in the old days. This was the abrupt end of traitors, or people who talk too much. Don't bother about trials. Just one slight push. Fascinating, isn't it? Maybe you'll come back one day. I don't think so. I don't like the idea of that slight push. A slip can be just as dangerous. I trust you gentlemen are not superstitious. I can be put in jail. It's not as unbecoming as all that. But it's a matter of being serious. Sorry.
Hello, Zaini. Mr. DeSteve, this is my sister, Zaini. How do you do? Please to sit down, sir. You take some coffee, eh? Thank you. You see, they are all wearing the fairs and the veil. These people are all friends of our movement. They come here to enjoy the atmosphere of the old church. Take Zani home at once. <coughs> Why should we go home? Are you crazy? Yes, the police should Sit come. Down. People are looking. This is my brother Eric, Mr. Distin. Oh. How do you do? You must forgive me, sir, but I am very worried about these two. I do not like them to be here with these people. Why not? He is young. He is an idealist. He is misled. They are all misled. Fools who think they can change the course of history. They are fighting for an cause. Honest? Then why do your leaders not reveal themselves to the members? They must be either crooks or cowards if they dare not come out into the open. much money for the bill. I didn't make a mistake. It was to pay for your wasted evening. I don't want you to waste this money. Modern Turkey is spoiling everything. I don't see the difference. Music means the same everywhere. The people are gay. If anything, they are happy now than in the old days. Take him away, he hasn't done it. Mary, I have no idea. Sheriff, please. I think I can arrange the release of our friend. Come on. Vicky, cut the bait. Vicky. And the brack on him. Thank you for your kindness. Oh, it is nothing. Come. I will see you safely to the street. Thank you. Lovren's best team. Oh, British. 
You may go. Thank you. I'm very sorry, but I haven't any papers with me. I'm very sorry, but now you will go with us. Uh, this lady came here with me. I'll be responsible for her. You'll be responsible for her. Yes. Very good. Thank you. I'll take you back to my boat. Are you wishing now you'd let them arrest me? No. You despise me, don't you? Why should I? Because of that other evening in the restaurant. That. I'd forgotten it. It wouldn't be any use trying to explain, would it? You don't have to. I understood. No, you didn't. If you'd understood, you wouldn't hate me so much. Would you? I don't hate you. It's your job. It wasn't. I'm sorry, I needn't have said that. It's, it's just that I wish it had been anyone else but you. Why? Because it doesn't matter. Just before you went away to the phone, you were saying you hoped we had lots of dinners together. They were different then. Supposing, just supposing that when you were away, something happened to make me change, make me appear so different. You wouldn't believe it, would you? I don't know why I'm telling you all this. It's hopeless. Tanya, it was then that I didn't believe you. I didn't want to believe that change. Before that, you don't know how much I liked you. Why did you do it? I said all those things on purpose to make you hit me. I wanted to stop you ever seeing me again. But why, Tanya? Why? Because they wanted me to spy on you, and I couldn't. I couldn't. To spy on me? Who wanted you to spy on me? Kazdim. Kazdim? That fellow who took Ralph away with him tonight? Who is he? He's the most feared man in Turkey, an Armenian. In the old days, he used to be in charge of the Royal Harim. Some call him the eunuch of Stamboul. What did he want to find out about me? Send me there this evening to keep you away from your hotel till midnight. Hotel? My report is a George in my room. Chabu We just do it. It doesn't look as if anyone's been here. I left my reports in the top drawer of my desk. That's Diana Duncan, my chief's daughter. She's pretty. Yeah, she is quite. What? How the devil did this get here? Well, what is it? It's a kind of military map. Fortifications or something. Yeah, he's a trap to get rescued. What do you mean? Planted here and then reported you to the police. What? Oh, I know he did. You've got to get rid of them. Burn them. Burn them quickly. It's too late. Never mind. Hide quickly. Where? In there. The yacht, while they're still there. Well, you don't seem very glad to see us. Melangi Batalika. What is it? Melangi Batalika. That's Turkish for how do you do it? No, it isn't. Isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, you're not glad to see us. Of course I am, Diana. It's just a bit of a shock, that's all. It's not as if I've been warned or anything. Where'd you keep him, Mary? Keep what? Your Harley. Don't be a fool. Sorry. It was meant to be funny. And so it was, my sweet. Thanks. We'd better make ourselves scarce. We're not wanted here. That isn't fair, Diana. Have you been fair? I don't expect you to wave a Union Jack or fire guns. But you haven't even kissed me. Not that I want you to now.
this is the Baroness Tanya Veronov. Uh, Tanya, I'd like you to meet my friends, Mr. Dan Cannon and Mr. Carew. Oxfam and hire horses. That is, if I'm right. How do you do? Oh, you speak English. Yes, I always say it's a great help if you understand the language you're speaking. <laughs> Yes, it certainly is. <coughs> you know, Larry, I think it would have been a good idea if we'd have telephoned you to say that we were coming. But it was a Diana's idea to give you a surprise. <laughs> it is a surprise, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it certainly is. <coughs> oh, goodbye, miss. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Better not. Please don't go on my account. I was just going myself. Please be careful of everything. Tony, I'm sorry. I'll see you again tomorrow. No. Goodbye. Well, Larry, I'd like to talk to you. Why didn't you tell me? <coughs> uh, pardon me. Uh, uh, not twice, if you want me. I'll, I'll be around. Diana, will you believe me? There's been between us. It was all my fault you're finding you here like this. I do believe you. I wish I didn't. Why? You're in love with her. Capitan Destiny, numero so nedium. Please do what I say. Tell your father I'll expect him at the depot tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. We'll find out what this crook Molotov is up to. Ah, uh, Captain Destin. Sorry to trouble you again. Oh, still the young lady you are responsible for, eh? This is not the same young lady. Oh, that's right. The other one was pretty. The officer and you seem to have the same taste. Forgive me if I search you. I have been ordered. Order ye, Arrhenius. Not good, Captain, to have big pistol. Is this yours? Yes, that's mine. And what kind of pictures do you take with this? Oh, snapshots of goats and beggars. Not Turkish forts and guns, maybe? Cast it. What was that you said? Well, nothing. Uh, no, I'm not interested in forts and guns. I hope not, Captain Destim. It's not encouraged in Turkey. We call it spying. Okay, uh -huh. Maps of Turkish forts. But Larry, what does all this mean? You keep out of this. Yes, I expect you'll find them planted all over the place. Yes, more for your collection. Thank you, Captain. And now I think you'll come with me. Just wait while I get my coat. Up for you. Arch. Larry, you seem to be in an awful mess. Can I do anything? You better get back to your father's job. Hi, Dad. Get a limp. Albano. Now listen to me, Larry. Peter! Who are you? I'm the man you just arrested. Where is Captain Destim? Now, I'd like to tell you from the very beginning. Now, Larry Destim and I will... You better buzz off, Diana. Peter, you surprised me. I didn't know you had it in you. Now we recall. My pal here was just telling me a story about a duck. At least I think it was a duck. Quack, 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 quack. Yeah, it was a duck, all right. The military governor wants to see you, Mr. Crew. You ought to be released. Oh, that's fine. Right, I well, I'm coming now. Well, goodbye, Richard. Who? Have you seen this? 
Now watch carefully. See that? Ah. Oh, but it is hardly likely. Already the police have telephoned asking me where he was. He has disappeared. I know, but he will reappear this morning. So I'll wait. That is, if I'm not in your way. Oh, but of course. Pardon. I thought perhaps you would like to look over a tobacco. Therefore, it is, uh, it is very, very interesting. The moon, please. I make arrangements. Nazim? Elmish? Adam Naru? Tama! Hello, Dana. Oh, there you are. You are late. No, really. Good morning, Mr. Destin. Good morning, Motov. Where's Ralph? He did not come this morning. Is Sir George here? Uh, no, he couldn't come. Anyway, I wanted to see you by myself first. Yes. I see you've met Mr. Moltoff already, Diana. You remember, we spoke about him last night, didn't we? I just told Miss Duncannon what an expert you were in the tobacco business. <laughs> Miss Duncannon's very interested in tobacco. She's very interested. Uh, do you mind explaining to Miss Duncannon how you classify the various brands? Uh, this is one of our specialities, the famous Jenny Jet tobacco. <laughs> now listen carefully, Diana, so that you get the idea. The bad one must be kept here, while the other one, the good one, must be allowed to circulate freely. But I'm sure Mr. Moltoff will be able to explain much better than I can. If you don't understand anything, just ask him, you know? Yes, of course, I understand. Well, I'll be back in a minute. In the meantime, just ask Mr. Moltoff anything you want to know. Oh, Mr. Moltoff. I'm so interested in everything to do with tobacco. I think it's all so thrilling, don't you? Uh, yes, yes, but we should see the depot first. We uh, should go with Mr. Destino. Now, um, tell me, Mr. Molotov, how can you tell which is a good tobacco and which is a bad tobacco before oh, you smoke uh, it? That is a very easy thing, Mr. 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 Canada. Oh, Mr. Molotov, now you stay here and tell me all about it. Oh. There is anything you want, Monsieur Destin? Yes, the key for this door. There is no key. It is lost. I shall have to do without it. I would not do that if I were you. Stand over there. Double crescent. Rifles. Enough for a whole regiment. What's that? Machine gun. Another. Ammunition. You seem to be well prepared. Mr. Destin, you are under arrest. Good morning, gentlemen. You're just in time. You come along with us now. Certainly, in a moment. Dana, get out of here quickly. Go to your father and tell him what's happened. You'll find me at the police station. I've got all the evidence I want. Please go quickly. All right, Larry. Leave it to me. Minute, Molotov. I'm ready, but I want you to arrest this man as well. I charge him with theft and conspiracy against the Turkish Republic. But I, I don't understand. I have no orders. Never mind about that. I'll explain to the chief of police. You take him along with you. All right, Mr. Destin. I am ready to go with you. Any certificate with Shekhan Amasin, he sent Kazdin Dempsey. Kazdin's men! <laughs> Hello, 
Sorry, monsieur, but still we have no news of monsieur d'estime. Thank you. I beg your pardon. Aren't you Miss Bellinoff? Yes. <laughs> we met last night. Don't you remember? You were coming out of the bathroom. Yes, I remember. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I tell you, you don't know what's happened to Larry d'estime, do you? No. Uh, maybe they were Oh. Diana and Larry. Were they engaged to be married? No. Oh, I mean, there was nothing formal. It was just one of those family understandings, you know, the sort of thing. There was nothing between you and Larry, really, was there? No. Not really. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. <laughs> I thought for the moment I, I'd said the wrong thing. I honestly didn't know. Miss Verano, may I speak to you, please? Yes, what is it? I am Ralph's brother. You remember last night he was taken away by Kazimbe. Yes. He was found this morning, drowned. Oh, that's terrible. I have a very important message for you from Mr. Destine. Why, have you seen him? Is he all right? Yes. But he is in grave danger, and he has gone to the military vizier to ask for help. But why the military vizier? I told him to go there. You told him? Oh, well, of course you couldn't know. Quick, we must do something. Well, what are you going to do? I can get into the palace and try and see him. You two come with me, wait outside. Mr. Destim, the military vizier will see you. Some time since our meeting in England, you may approach, Captain. You seem surprised to see me. I hoped to see the military vizier. I am the military vizier. What can I do for you? I had the intention of reporting something of vital importance to the state. Are you suggesting that now you change your mind? Surely you that little episode in London would cause me to forget my sense of duty. I'm glad to have your assurance, Your Highness. Dennis. Cigarette, Captain? No, thank you. Now, Captain Destine, what is it you want to tell me? I've just found out that a certain gang has been using my company's depot as one of its bases for a revolution against the Turkish Republic. Revolution? My dear Captain, such things don't happen now in Turkey. But it will happen, Your Highness, unless you stop it at once. Who are these people, these revolutionaries? They call themselves the Friends of the Double Crescent. Friends of the Double Crescent? Do you know any of their leaders? Only one for certain, Maltov, the superintendent at my depot. Do you have any proof against him? A room full of rifles and machine guns. Machine gun? You are sure? Yes, Your Highness, I saw them myself. What sort of an organization have I got working for me? Do you know what this man says? He has found rifles and machine guns in the Dun Cannon Tobacco Depot. I've worked for years to build up this organization. Then an Englishman comes to Istanbul, and you can't prevent him finding out enough to ruin us and our holy cause. Forgive me, Your Imperial Majesty. He escaped us twice. I can assure Your Majesty it will not happen again. Well, my inquisitive captain, it will not be so easy this time. I suppose you English would hardly call that pretty. It gives me a great deal of satisfaction. And I recall a certain night in England. Take him away, Casby.
Duncanan Hanun, good brother. Duncanan Hanun. Pretty. Yes. Prince Ali. Do you understand, Kevin? What a very pleasant surprise. I want to know why I've been arrested. Arrested? My dear lady, you're my very welcome guest. Then do you mind telling your men? There seems to be some misunderstanding. I'm rather afraid it's you who misunderstand. You must excuse me, I have to leave you now. May I hope for your company at dinner? Do you think I'm actually going to stay in your house? You see how hospitable I can be. Do you like I will serve you while you're my guest? You're crazy. Don't you think my father will miss me? And the British Embassy will have something to say about this. You really think the Embassy would trace you here? So, I'm to consider myself kidnapped. My dear lady, what an ugly expression. You can't get away with this. But it will be such a pleasure to try. I tell you, I know he's here. And how do you know? Because he told me he was coming here. And I'll not leave here without him. Nobody is asking you to leave. I warn you, Captain. There are people waiting for me outside. If I don't return to them within ten minutes, they'll send to the police for help. You are becoming quite an efficient diplomat, Tanyushka. Ten minutes, you say? In that case, I'd better make sure that Captain Destine is not with us after all. She's been a long time. I hope she has found Mr. Destine. Where's Cassim? He has just left the palace. Left? Where for? I don't know. I only heard him say uh, the same place as yesterday. The same as yesterday? I knew how long before they left the palace. They've got to drive across the whole city. We're taking the shortest cut across the bus. We must get up to the marble tower before Captain. If not, he'll kill Daddy if he has so many others. Interesting old place, this. Oh, but I forget. You have been here before. <laughs> And if I remember rightly, I had the pleasure of showing you this. You will appreciate the purpose more this visit. Take away the gag. I'm sorry, but we had to take our precautions. You may express your feelings now. You won't hear me scream, Kastim. Even Englishmen have been known to scream under certain circumstances. You can even kill an Englishman under certain circumstances, but you can't get away with it, Kazdim. Why not? The police are convinced that our young friend Ralph committed suicide. Tomorrow you'll hang for it, Kazdim. Tomorrow? <laughs> there is a night between today and tomorrow, and it will be an eventful one for Turkey, perhaps for the whole world. What a pity you will not be here to witness the ascension of His Imperial Majesty Ali to the throne of his ancestors. a practical man, Captain. I think this will interest you. You see, it is very strong. Yet in a few hours, the sea water will dissolve it completely, leaving no trace. Everyone will think it is suicide. But I'm afraid you will have to take my word for that. Bachelor.
would have been a pity to end our little game with a bullet so crude. Anything particular you would like to say, Captain? No? You are sure? Then goodbye, Captain Destine. I get here. You're safe in my flat with friends. I hope you so. Hello, Larry. Feeling better? We had a grand time dragging the Bosworth for you. D dragging? I remember now, C Castillo. Don't think now. You can thank Talia for finding her. Talia. How did you know? Arif told me where you've gone, and I guess the rest. Talia. Talia. The vizier, to Prince Ali. You mean the fellow you sucked at the gun? He's, he's the leader of the Double Crescent. Give him some more of this. I'm Tanya's mother. We'll look after you, but you must rest a little first. But it's urgent, Peter. They're planning to overthrow the government, put Ali on the throne. It may happen any moment but now. That's impossible. All Turkey is against them. But they're heavily armed. They'll kill thousands even if they are beaten. Go to the embassy. They'll warn the government quickly. But will anyone who will listen to me? Arif, go with him. Tell them about the guns marked with the double crescent down at the depot. Tell them that Rauf didn't commit suicide. He was murdered. The same way they tried to kill me. Make them understand. It's urgent. All right. I'll make them understand, even if I've got to go to prison again. Be careful, gentlemen. You don't know who you're up against. He's a devil. He's a fiend. Well, don't worry, Baroness. We'll be all right. I'll get St. George onto this, and we'll start up Stamboul in no time. Tanya. What can I say to thank you for saving my life? I've got such a lot of things to thank you for now. Larry, why didn't you tell me you were going to re-engage Diana? But I'm not! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be inquisitive. I'm so glad you're safe now. <gasps> Good evening, my dear Baroness. I am afraid you did not hear my knock. No. No, Your Excellency. I have come to see your daughter, Baroness. You want to see me, Captain? No. You wanted to see me. You were telling me some very curious things this afternoon when we were interrupted. I was excited. I, I didn't know what I was saying. 
How unfortunate for you both. You may be interested to read this. Your extradition papers, Baroness. But this is in the name of the Sultan, and signed by you as Chief of Police. That's not fair. No, but it will be tomorrow. There will be a few changes in Turkey tomorrow, and you'll regret having betrayed me just when I was about to reward you. You are a clever girl, Tanya. In a way, I should be sorry to send you back to Russia. In a way. You are so clever that you surprise even me sometimes. But I wonder if you are a little too clever. Open that door. Open that door. Open it, I say! Come out, Captain Destin. Get some rope. Get up. Signed in the name of Ali, the Sultan of Turkey. Miss Duncan ought to be very grateful to you for what you have done for her fiancé. That is, if she is ever in a position to say so. What do you know about Miss Duncan? Uh, nothing of importance. What are you talking about? The last I saw of Miss Duncan, she was entering the private room of my master. You're lying, you! No, Captain Destine. She was brought from your depot to the palace by our own men. What happened then? That would depend entirely upon the wishes of my master. I must go to the palace at once. But you can't go. You're too weak. Peter will bring help. I can't wait. But it's suicide. I've got to get her out. Don't you see? The girl's in danger. Yes, I understand. I'll tell Catherine's driver to come up. Wait a minute. Now. Hi, the Hello, I'm Miss Andy. He's coming up. Stand in front of Kazdim and hide him. Now, if he moves, Larry, don't worry. What are you doing? Mother will watch Kazim. I'm going with you. No, Tanya, I can't take you. It's much too dangerous. That's why I'm going. They know me at the palace. Without me, you wouldn't even get through the gate. All right, get in. King goes there. Uh, black five on red six. Where's black four? Red juice on black Red nine on black ten. The eight lies there. What's the matter with you? What is it, Excellency? <coughs> oh, I, I am so thirsty. You thought you'd get some of my vodka. I won't waste it on you. I don't care that you die of thirst. Did you 
think you could trick me into untying you? <laughs> no, it won't work, Excellency. And I'm not going to help you back into the chair. You can stay right where you are. Of Kalum. Kapiyachinis. Harry, did you see? They're closing the gates. We'll never get out of here. Never mind that now. We haven't got in yet. You just walk in. I'll get inside somehow and meet you in the inner hall. Upstairs and keep out of the way. What's that? If you move, I shall have to shoot you. You need not be afraid of me, Baroness. Afraid of you? Not a bit of it, Excellency. <laughs> For years I've shivered when I thought of you. But you wouldn't be able to hurt a baby now. The key, it's working out. <laughs> <laughs> to me. Oh, not orders, my dear little Dan. We'll be very nice to you. How do you get it? We have other methods to teach obedience and humility. Hey, 
here until they search the room again. Wait here. I'll see if I can get you out the same way as I managed to get in. Larry, don't leave me. Arlie's just going to give the signal for the rising. What signal? I don't know, but he just told me that he was going to give it personally in a few minutes. His men are waiting for it all over Turkey. Ali. Personally. Wait here. I'll go with him. No, you can't. Ali mustn't see you now. But what if he sees you? That'll be too bad. Daddy was risking his life to save you. And to save me? Yes. I don't understand you. Why? Because I'd rather see him happy with you than dead. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I believe you were looking for me. Get away from that door. If you try any tricks, I'll shoot. You seem to have nine lives. But 99 wouldn't be enough to get you out of this palace alive. The time for threats is gone, Ali. Your game's up. You'll give no signal and there'll be no revolution tonight. Well, you see, look, it's deserted. But we must get inside and see what's happening. I cannot misuse my position as military governor. I'm sorry they have come as far as this. We must go back. And then fire! Well, let me patch you up. I've got a handkerchief here. I think it's fairly clean. You get your praises, son. We'll have a turkey for this, old boy. Oh, Daddy, you should have seen him. He was marvelous. Somehow I knew all the time that he'd come I rescue. But I couldn't believe my eyes when he bought his room and took me for the hand. Larry, my boy, I owe you more than I can ever express in words. That's all right, sir. It's lucky you came when you did. Well, 
I shall find plenty to thank you again on our way home. No, Daddy. I don't think Larry will be coming back with us. What? Why shouldn't... Tanya! Oh, Peter. What is it? Take me somewhere where they can't see me. I think I'm going to cry or something. I say, be careful. That's the last one. trying to run away. I'm not. But why should I stay? I'm finished with all this. So am I. You? Of course, silly. 